welcome. My name is Bianca Collins. I'm the Curator of Public Programs for the Fowler Museum at UCLA, and I'm streaming live from Pearl River Deli in Chinatown, Los Angeles. I'm very pleased to present today's program as part of our Global Cuisine Cooking Lessons, which offers the opportunity to learn how LA's favorite international restaurants cook up their most famous, easy to make dishes in live cooking classes led by their chefs on Zoom. It turns out when food is your love language, some secrets are too good not to share. The Chinatown neighborhood of Los Angeles was established by immigrants from the Cantonese Pearl River Delta region of China. The aptly named Pearl River Deli, Chef Johnny Lee's newest restaurant, offers an innovative take on Cantonese food with a small but strong menu that changes regularly. It celebrates the natural state of ingredients and reflects Lee's appreciation, preservation, and evolution of Cantonese cuisine. Today we are celebrating this restaurant's one year anniversary by learning how to make Chef's famous soy sauce chicken with ginger scallion sauce, a staple on PRD's ever-changing menu. Ingredients lists were sent upon RSVP, so I hope that you came with supplies prepared, ready to cook. If you have any questions during this program, please submit them through the Q&A function found at the bottom of your Zoom screen, and uh, we'll get to your answers right away. All right, let's do this. All right, let me turn this around. Hi, Chef. Hi, everyone. All right, so let's start by reviewing all of the ingredients that everyone should have ready to go. All right, so first we're going to have a pot of water going. Uh, this is a, a four quart stock pot with 10 cups of water. Um, and then we're going to have pour in some soy sauce. There's two types, regular soy sauce and dark soy sauce. And then there's going to be some uh, brown sugar mm -hmm. and a little bit extra salt just to season in case we need it. And the uh, dry spices, which are totally optional, but I highly recommend you add them. And which are which? So here we have dried orange peel, star anise, uh, cinnamon, Sichuan peppercorn, and cloves. All right, so these are optional ingredients, but you're going to use them all, right? Yes, so if you only have a certain combination, uh, you can, if you're missing one or two, it's fine. I mean, honestly, one, if you only have one or two, that's fine. You can put all or put some or none. It's really up to you. Um, if you want the dish to be more aromatic, that's, a, that's totally up to you. But the base flavoring are going to be soy sauce and sugar, and that's what will give the chicken most of this flavor. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to the chicken in the hot first because that takes the longest amount of time. Okay. So we'll, we already have the water that's getting close to boil, so, so we'll add in everything else right now. So we're going to start with one and a half cups of the soy sauce. Okay. This is just regular sodium soy sauce, but you can use low sodium if, if you want. Yes, and also is tamari okay if they don't want to do soy sauce? Tamari is fine. Um, the only thing is you will probably have to adjust how much sugar you end up putting in the dish. Um, okay. But I'll explain that later. Okay. So we'll put one and a half cups of soy sauce in here. And now we'll do the dark soy sauce. Dark, dark soy sauce is, like the name says, darker, but it's actually sweeter and less salty. Okay. But it's also one of the main component reasons we use, also use this to add color. So is prickly ash the same thing as Szechuan peppercorns? In a way, yes, but prickly ash will usually contain the stems of the Szechuan peppercorn as well. So if you look at what we have here, um, this is only the Szechuan peppercorns. Um, usually prickly ash is kind of like a cheaper substitute, which is like hasn't been handpicked through for all the stems. Okay, got it. So it's fine, but you know, as long as you can live with stems in, in there. <laughs> okay. All right, so we're going to put the dark soy sauce in. And now we're going to add a cup of uh, brown sugar. Uh, what I'm using here is actually a type of Asian style. They, could, they call it black sugar, but it's just really a really dark, unrefined uh, brown sugar. It's, this is considered like a, super, a really unrefined sugar. Okay, so one cup, and we'll get that in there. And we're going to stir it up a bit and let the sugar dissolve. Okay. 
All right, I'm going to check in with Q&A and see how that's going. Libby, if you can help me out by dismissing some of the affirmations that the screen looks okay, that would be helpful. So what's the best way to dry an orange peel for keeping freshness? Um, most people just buy <laughs> dry orange peels, to be honest. Yeah. But we're actually, in the store, we're actually drying our orange peel. Uh, the reason why most people don't do this is because it, the process usually demands one year. So unless you really like to plan ahead, um, you're probably not going to be able to have dry or homemade dry orange peel ready handy. Okay. And but, did, did right. the water need to be hot before they put in the soy sauce? Does it make a difference? Oh, uh, no, not really. And what heat should the water mixture be on right now? Uh, it should be on the highest setting because you want to bring it to a boil. Okay. Okay, so we're going to add one cup of our uh, rose wine. So this is an uh, aromatic um, type of Chinese uh, liquor. Oh. But it's usually kind of hard to find. So you can't find it. You can use Shaoxing, rice cooking wine, even sake. Um, it's really more for the aroma than the flavor. And if someone doesn't have dark soy sauce, is there a substitution? Um, I would say just use a little bit more regular soy sauce, but don't use the equivalent amount of dark soy sauce because then the sodium level is going to be a little too much. Okay. You can compensate with adding a little bit extra sugar instead. Mm -hmm. um, the only difference is in the appearance is you're not going to get as dark as a chicken. Um, and the flavor is slightly different, but the addition of sugar should help balance it out. Okay. And then next we'll be uh, putting in the spices if you have them. So I'm going to break the cinnamon stick because it's too big for the pot. Can you use a freshly grated orange peel? Um, I don't see why not. It's the different flavors. The flavor of a dried orange peel is, I don't know how to explain it, but there there is a distinct flavor difference and aroma. Hmm. Um, it wouldn't hurt to put fresh orange peel. Okay. And in the same way that it would just be a different flavor, could someone use dried kumquat instead of the orange? Oh, I don't know. That's pretty interesting, <laughs> but uh, I don't see why not. I mean, to be honest, like this type of, um, a, a, a cooking liquid. There's a lot of versions. Everyone has like their own version of it. Um, some people use, I've heard of people using dried like sour plums even. But so honestly, I would say just do whatever it tastes good. So we put a, a cup and a half of the cooking wine in the recipe. Does it make a difference if it's one cup or one and a half cups or to taste? Um, I usually do it to taste because I'm using rose wine that's pretty strong. I'm gonna start with a cup first, okay. and then I'm gonna taste it and then see where you want more more of the aroma because the rose wine has a very strong aroma. Okay. And whole cloves, not not ground, right? Whole cloves are ideally ground is fine, um, but it is gonna make your sauce um, grainy because of the powder that's dissolved in there. Because so ideally later on we want to strain all this out. Okay. But it's not a big deal. Okay. Okay, so I'm adding all the spices now. So someone's saying there are green and black Sichuan peppercorns. Does it matter which which one they use? Uh, yeah, it definitely matters. Uh, the green ones are have a much different aroma and flavor. Um, so black is better. Oh, what well, red? The normal oh. the normal red ones are better. Um, the green ones are entirely different plant. Okay. But if you want to experiment and try yourself, feel free. I I'm, I'm, I personally never tried it myself, so. I can't, okay. I can't guarantee the results. But, okay, we're gonna take this, we're gonna boil down, so we're gonna taste this real quick. So it's boiling. So you're tasting it. What do you taste, what are you looking for? I'm looking for saltiness, sweetness, a little bit of um, like like complexity from the spices, but that's too soon because we just barely added it in there. But okay. I do get a hint of it, so I'm gonna adjust it with a little bit more salt because ideally you want this to taste to a point of where it almost tastes like it tastes like it's too salty, because oh. that flavor that's all it's going to do is the chicken. Okay, and so someone asked if the liquor is salted. Um, Probably. Good question. Probably not, but sometimes these are. Or actually, yes, this this one is. Okay, 
And so people can definitely like they don't have to use a whole chicken, right? They can do different pieces. Oh um, yeah. Um, traditionally at home, most people just if most people do a version where they just cook it with just only chicken wings. Oh, cool. And that's easy, as fast. You know, it's like you can get dinner, you can get it on dinner on the table in like half an hour kind of deal. So I'll taste it again. Oh, it smells so good. Okay, so any tips for keeping the sauce as a master stock sauce for reuse? Um, yeah, just after each time you strain it out and then um, bring it to a boil before you and then let it cool down and before you refrigerate it. And the next time you use it, bring it to a boil again before you throw any meat in there. Cool. Okay, so now this is boiling, we're gonna have the chicken. All right. So there's different ways of dunking this, but you're if you're if you're if you have a hook, that would be best, but I'm gonna assume you don't. But in case you do, you can just hook it up, hook it through the um this is the I call this the armpit, but this is where the uh, wishbone will go through or the collarbone. So this is you should the reason we do it for here is because this is the strongest bone in the chicken after it's done cooking. Okay. So it's the least likely to break while you're pulling out. Because oh, okay. the last thing you want is for the bone to like snap and then fall back in the pot and it's splash with a hot liquid. Right. Speaking from experience. Yeah, I was gonna say I <laughs> think that's happened to me before too. But an easy way to do this is if you if if your chicken comes with a head. It's actually easier just to grab by the head and dunk it in, but because this one doesn't, and I assume most skewers don't, then we're going to do another method where we just hold it by the wing, and then we're just going to duck it in sideways. All right. So we're going to drop it in slowly. And then I think what you want to do is you want to tip it in, and you're going to see air bubbles coming out. That's the, that's the air in the body cavity coming out. So what we're, right now, what we're doing right now is tempering the interior of the chicken so that it's going to cook more evenly. So I'm going to let it sit for a few seconds. And then we're going to pull it out. And don't pull out too fast because what's going to happen is all the liquid inside is going to come gush it out. And you pull out too fast, it's going to splash and Slowly. hit you. So as you can see, you're going to see the liquid coming out. All right, because it already came out. And then we're going to dunk it back in again. And we'll do this about three or four times, depending on how we feel like. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna see how people are doing over here. Okay, we've got quite a few questions. So while you're dunking, I'm gonna get through some of them, okay? Yeah. Is there anything that can replace the black sugar? Oh, uh, just regular brown sugar is fine. Okay. And um, uh, you didn't add any grapeseed oil to the pot, did you? Uh, no. Okay. Um, can someone sous vide chicken using the broth? Uh, yes, yes. As long as your, if you're doing a whole chicken, it's a little bit more complicated because ideally there's two different cooking temperatures, like the breast for the dark meat and the white meat. So, but if you're just, let's say, only doing chicken breasts, then you can just sous vide to say like 145 for like an hour or two hours. Okay. And can you do this in an instant pot? Yes, but I don't know the tiny organ setting because um, that's not how you do it. <laughs> that's those buildings are very you have to be pretty exact because the chicken, which can overcook very easily, just an extra minute can be can make them take it from like from cooked to like overcooked. Right. Okay. So you um, so you didn't. Okay. So how much sugar do you think you added in total? Uh, I probably added an extra quarter of a cup. Because everyone's sugar is going to be a little bit different. If you're using regular brown sugar, um, it might not be as sweet or have as much car caramel notes as the ones I, I use. Um, and some, and also if you're not, even if you can't find brown sugar, you can use white sugar too. Okay. Uh, but yeah, you're going to have to adjust everything by taste. Okay. You know, my, my best tip is just make sure it just tastes good to you. You know, you want to, you want the sauce to taste sweet. You want it to taste salty, and um, you want it to taste a little herbaceous from from the tangerine peel reason that. Could people start dunking even before it started boiling or should they be waiting until it boils to dunk? Ideally it should be boiling, but it can be close. It can be close. It just needs to be hot. But I did your temper you want to temper it into the chicken so that it cooks evenly. Because the last thing you want is for the interior to not finish cooking while the interior is done. And then you end up with a situation where you're trying to cook, force the inside chicken to cook, but the outside's already done. And then right. that's how you end up with cool cooked chicken on the outside. So it should be pretty hot before you start dunking. Yes. Okay. 
And ginger and onions yet to come, everyone. No ginger and onions yet. Okay, so um, if we're using drumsticks, can we just put in the pot and stir? Oh yeah, totally. No, no need to dunk. No need to dunk it. It's mainly because when you do a whole chicken, you have the interior cavity that pre prevents it from warming up as fast as the outside. Okay. And how many times do you lift and lower the chicken into the pot before finally leaving it? I personally like to do three or four times, okay. uh, depending on the size of the chicken. Obviously, a bigger chicken right. benefits from more dunking. Um, yeah. Okay. And did you add the neck and liver to the pot? Uh, yes, I did that uh, unconsciously. So <laughs> yes, if you have giblets and if you want to eat them, you can add them in or you can just sit them for stock or some other project. Okay. And so then, so then people are wondering about the water, like, do we bring it to boil and then leave it on medium? Like, where should it be like sitting? Oh, it should stay on high the entire time. Stay on high the entire time. So what's going to happen right now is we're going to wait to bring it back to a boil. Mm -hmm. Once it comes to a boil, we're going to shut it off and just let it sit. Okay, so bring it to a boil and then shut it off and let it sit. Okay. And then in the meantime, we can start preparing the uh, ginger sauce. All right, so we move the camera over here. All right, guys, it is time for green onions and the ginger. Okay, so first we're gonna take our ginger um, and we didn't specify the amount because honestly, you can use, make as little or make as much as you want. And if you have extra, then you just save it for whatever you wanna do with it. Yeah. Uh, so we're gonna just do like a small amount so I'm gonna show you how to do it quickly. Uh, so first, peel the ginger. So what are you using there? You're using the back of us or the spoon? Yeah, I'm just using the spoon because the spoon can get into the little crevices better than a peeler could. Oh, I'm always struggling with the crevices. Okay, and then we're gonna cut off all the very woody bits. And then we can actually use, still use this for more flavor. So we can, we, we can take some of the more chunkier parts and throw them back in the pot. So it just adds more flavor. So basically what we do is there's, there's multiple ways in which you can achieve this. Some people, the traditional method is you just mince this really finely and then you pour hot oil on top of it and to release the aroma of the ginger. Um, we do it a little bit differently because we feel like that's a bit too inconsistent because sometimes the oil does it. Some of it's just like ginger that will be covering other ginger and then they might not all be exposed to oil. So what we like to do is that we process it and if you have a strong blender, you can actually use a blender as well. But for today, we'll, we'll use a food processor. Because that's what I assume most people will have. Um, so I don't think we told people to prepare for a food processor. So if they don't have one, what's the best, a second best option? Uh, you can use a blender, or like I said, you can just mince it by hand. Okay, so um, mincing by hand if you don't have a machine. Yeah, it, and again, the flavor will still be the same. Okay, the only okay. difference is the texture is going to be a little bit different. You know. One's gonna be smoother versus one being chunkier, and that's a personal preference. Some people okay. actually like it chunk, the chunkier style, mm -hmm. but what we do here is a bit more smoother. And is there a preference for a young or old ginger? Um, I for this dish, I personally would prefer to use old ginger. Um, an old ginger. Yeah, nothing too young. And then, what if someone's only cooking with half a chicken? Do you reduce the time in which it sits poaching? Uh, yes, definitely. So, um, I don't. I normally don't cook by time. I cook by temperature. So, I usually give my. I usually check periodically. Uh, if you're cooking half a chicken, it's gonna definitely cook a lot faster because you don't have that interior cavity that's preventing the heat from cooking from the in, inside out. And then you're gonna need another pot. Uh, any kind of pan or pot, pot pan will work. And so, people are. Still concerned um, about knowing when their chicken's done. How? Well, how, well, I'll show you in a I'll show you in a second. Okay. But honestly, it's not going to be that fast. Okay. So, um, because what what I'm using here is a four pound chicken. So, from my experience, it usually takes about you know from 25 minutes to 35 minutes to cook one, depending on how hot, how long you kept your liquid boiling. So, in I'm pretty sure we have we have enough time to check. But <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah, 
I'm pretty sure by the time we check, it's still not going to be done. Okay, perfect. So we have time to work on this. Okay, so if you do have a blender, you can actually blend it with the oil and create like this ginger, like kind of smoothie oh. before you try starting the pan. But for now, we're just going to do the, the old school way. Okay, so this is so this is processed. You want to process it pretty fine too. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to transfer it to a pan. And then, we're going to do here for now, and then we're going to cook it in a little bit. In the meantime, we're going to cut some scallions. All right. So we, I like to use both the whites and the greens. Some people might only use one or the other. And I don't use like any of the, um, the yellowing parts, but I do throw them into the pot for flavor. So if someone didn't have time to grab green onion, can they use white or yellow onion instead? Um, I personally would not recommend it, but if they don't have green onions, they can just use pure ginger. Just ginger? Ginger by itself, because okay. there's versions of these recipes where some people don't even use scallions. Right. And that's fine. Um, I'm gonna take the ends and throw them in the pot too as well. And how much ginger did you put in there? I think we told people, uh, um, we just said fresh ginger, we didn't say how much. Yeah, so, Ideally, you can use as much as those you want. The ratio of ginger to green onion is totally up to you. There's people that like it more on the gingery side, and then they use more ginger than green onions. And then there's people like me, I, I prefer the green onions more than the ginger itself. So I tend to put a lot of green onions in mine. So it's totally up to you, um, whatever you feel like. Okay. And then you're gonna to wanna to slice the scallions as thin as possible. Oh, wow. And then just make sure you look for any like parts that might have dirt or that weren't like after you wash them and they didn't come off. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not sure we're gonna need all this, so I'm not gonna cut all of it yet. Any extra we have, we'll just throw in the stock pot, and that's just gonna add more flavor. I think this should be enough screen onion for now, but knowing me, I'll probably add more later because it's just gonna like it <laughs> that way. I, I okay. love green onion too. All right, so we're gonna check the chicken. So at this point, I highly recommend using a thermometer because that's the best way to be sure. All right, one. But if you don't, um, there's, there's other ways to go. Okay, so right now the way your chicken, we have the chicken, if the back's a little bit closed, don't worry about that, it's fine because it'll still cook mostly all the way through. If what? If the back of the chicken is exposed, oh, okay. that's fine. Because that part cooks faster, so it doesn't really need to be submerged. Okay, so we're going to grab it by the neck, or what, the neck right here, and then we're going to bring it forward a bit. And then we're going to uh, insert the thermometer. So ideally, you want to look for like the, th the thickest part of the breast. And you want to sit at like around like a 45 degree angle mm -hmm. because then you're aiming to hit the breastbone because that's the part of chicken that's going to take the longest to cook. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, right now I'm touching it and I'm only reading like 96. So it's still pretty raw inside mm -hmm. at this point. And that's a four and a half pound chicken. It's pretty raw. So yeah, so it hasn't been that long. I think it's only been like 10 or 15 minutes since we put this in here. So how can someone who's using a smaller cut of meat and doesn't have a, temp, a thermometer check temp? There's always, there's always, um, there's always a few ways to tell. So if let's say, let's say you were only cooking the legs, right? Like chicken leg quarters. Mm -hmm. Let's try to show you really quick. Okay. So. So usually when the legs start getting cooked, the skin around the bottom starts to curl and then they'll start to expose. And if you can actually see the bone where the meat, oh. if you see where the meat, if the meat actually curls up, you see the bone, then you know it's definitely done. Oh, okay. All right, cool. so we're gonna leave this in here for a bit. And then dress, I imagine, cook the quickest because there's no bone, right? Uh, it depends if you do bone, boneless breasts, but oh, right. um, with the breast, you're actually going for a lower temperature. Uh, the dark meat and the white meat of the chicken cook at different temperatures, or they're done at different temperatures. 
And so what temperature means you've cooked it? What are you looking for with that temperature? So for a white meat, ideally you're looking for at least 145. Okay. Preferably no more than 155. Okay. And then for dark meat, you're looking for 155 to 165. Okay. And where'd you put the white parts of the scallion? Are they in the pot with the chicken or are they somewhere else? Uh, I just put the ends in the pot, but the whites are still here. Okay. Whites have not yet been added to any dish. So, okay, we're gonna take this off for now and let it, let it sit. All right, we're taking it we'll, off the heat. Okay, then we're gonna get canned with the uh, ginger. So. What kind of oil are you putting in there? So we're just using a neutral oil. Today we're just using canola, but you can use, uh, you can preferably use something like peanut oils, I don't want a high smoke point, peanut oil, safflower oil. Grape seed, avocado. Uh, grape seed. Uh, is avocado high smoke point? I have no idea. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> I really coconut. Know. I'm just trying to imagine what everyone's gonna ask if it's probably not coconut. Good. Probably not coconut. Okay. But yeah, any neutral flavored oil with high smoke point should work. So we're just gonna use canola. And how many green onions do you think people should use? You thought you had too many, right? So usually, the ratio of green onions to ginger, you can kind of aim for if you're going by like volume you can aim for like one to one so if you're using like one inch maybe like i guess for every inch of green of ginger you can use like one scallion okay maybe that's like a ratio that's like a rough ratio okay, okay so we're going to heat up the oil with the ginger in here so we're not trying to cook the ginger all the way all we're trying to do is soften it and release the moisture because the water the water content in the ginger can has a quite a bit of a, a bitter and astringent flavor um can the soy sauce mix that the chicken soaking in be reused uh yes so it could it could usually be reused several times um but after each time you use it you're going to have to adjust the flavor next time because every time you cook the chicken it takes the flavor out of that sauce so if you're gonna use it again, you're gonna need to add more flavor to, to compensate for that. So you're gonna add more soy sauce, more salt, more sugar next time. Okay. And you, you kind of have to do it by taste because you know, depending on how much chicken cook, you don't know how much flavor it's out of there. So that, okay, so we're gonna turn the heat because it's already heating to boil. Someone's saying, what's the oil to ginger ratio if we're not measuring? Uh, so that I don't measure because I go by sight. I just want enough oil to cover it. To cover it. Yes. Oh, so it should be in like a bath. It should be like pretty loose because, and also remember, you're gonna add green onions to it, so you want enough oil to also like cover the green onions as well. Okay, so good amount of oil. Yeah, and you can always you can also add less and then add more as you go. Yes. And then in, even if and if there's too much oil again, you can always just screw it off the top and save for that cooking something else because then you'll have flavored oil for something else to saute with something else. Got it. Okay, so we're gonna put it on a very, very low heat. Let it kind of cook down a bit, give it like a few minutes. A few minutes on low heat. So someone said that their chicken doesn't really have the. Um, oops, hold on one second. Someone said that their chicken doesn't have the same color as yours yet. Um, she said hers is still very pale. Maybe it's just because it hasn't been in as long, or maybe um, she didn't use as much. Usually the color, it comes from the dark soy sauce. So depending ah. on what kind of dark soy sauce you use, it might not color Okay, well. got it, yeah, that's what someone else said. And then too. also there's there's different types of chickens as well. And sometimes from what, what I've noticed, the skin sometimes doesn't take on the color as well as other chickens. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why, but <laughs> flavor wise, it should be fine. It's just, it's just a cosmetic thing. Okay, so this is gent very, very gently bubbling. You don't want this to change color. You want to maintain a bright yellow right. hue. If it starts to change color, then you kind of got too far, but I mean, it'll still be good, but it just won't look as nice. Okay. But if you want to, you are trying to find a balance of maintaining the fresh flavor of ginger, but at the same time, you want it to get as cooked as much as you can. So. And I know it sounds a bit like very precise, but like you, you can just kind of play it by ear and like go by what you feel. And you know, you can taste it as you go and see if enough of that raw ginger taste has left it or not. 
Okay, so all right, we can turn off. We turn off now. Um, the residual heat should finish off mostly, so we're going to let it sit. And we're not going to add the ginger, the scallion, right away because I don't want to actually cook the scallion too much. But you still want to add it while it's still warm, so that it kind of gently ripples the scallions and incorporates the flavor, infuses the flavor into the oil. Okay. But you don't want to actually cook the scallions. So you put the chicken back on the burner, but the burner is not on. It's still just sitting in its warm water, right? Yeah. So sometimes, um, sometimes the chicken, if it was really cold inside, it might take a little bit more heating to uh, finish out away. So we're going to temp it in a few minutes. And then if, we, if I feel like it's not going to finish cooking without more uh, fire from the burner, mm -hmm. then we're going to turn it on for a little bit just to kind of encourage it to like get to that right temperature. Because okay. ideally, what we're looking for is, in order to get like that perfect texture, what we're looking for is we want the temperature, interior temperature of chicken to get to like gently rise up, and then we want it to stop, which is really hot, to like kind of gently cool down and further the meat in the middle point. And ideally, that middle point would be like one fifty-five. Okay. So usually, I'll be temping the liquid periodically. So right now we're like one sixty-five, which is fine because we want we don't want to scoop more than one sixty-five anyway. So it's right. kind of like, it's kind of like a controlled sous vide in a way. Oh, okay. Okay, so this is getting kind of cool. So I think we can add our scallions without it turning color. So we're gonna add the green onions now. Um, yeah, just don't add them when it's too hot because it's gonna turn the green onions kind of brownish in color. Um, which again, it should stay, still taste fine, but aesthetically, it doesn't look as nice. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we're going to add the green onions. Uh, I didn't add everything because I just wasn't sure what it was going to look like. I usually just do this by uh, eyesight. Mm -hmm. If I feel like there's too much green onion, then I won't add any more. So this is actually looking pretty good to me right now. I think I'm going to leave out the rest of the green onions. Okay. You can always save the rest for like either um, garnish or, or just another dish. Or you can throw it to the sauce. Just oils, ginger, and onion. Yeah, and then all we do is season it with a little bit of stock. I mean, I mean sorry, salt. Okay. And then we're, we're good to go. So ideally with salt, I'm using kosher salt. Um, I use a fair amount of salt. You want this to actually be on the saltier side because of the condiment. It's it's meant to be a condiment they use a little like gingerly. So <laughs> no, <laughs> no pun intended. No pun intended. <laughs> um, yeah, but, someone said, what if I have too much oil? Like, is that an issue? Should it's, it's not an issue. If it bothers you, what you can do is you can always scrape off some of that oil on top, strain it, and then save it for another purpose. You can actually use it. It's great. If you, you have, sometimes we end up with a little too much oil. We'll, we'll strain it, and then uh, we'll use it to do things like saute our eggs or something. Ooh, yum. Because it is basically a, a flavor to the oil at this point, all the excess oil that is. Okay, so this is. Looking pretty good. Let's go taste it out for salt. And like I said, you want this to be on. I, the way I I train my staff to make the sauce is, um, I tell them you want you want it to taste like it's just barely too salty. Okay. Not enough. A little bit more. That looks like a lot, <laughs> but right now when I taste it, I still taste the fresh green onion flavor. Um, and the ginger, I don't really taste too much of that astringency from the raw rawness. So it's pretty much what I'm going for. It's a little more. It's a tiny bit more. Okay. And that should be it. Okay, so we just set this aside, let it cool down a bit. Let the flavors melt. Right. If you can make, yeah, you can make this a couple hours in advance if you want, and it's better that way. Uh, to let the flavors kind of like sit and melt them through a little bit. Right, you always kind of want it to marinate, right? Yeah. Okay, so do you want to, are we just uh, letting this stuff sit for a little longer? We've got some more questions we could get through. Yeah, yeah. So right now we're just waiting for the chicken to cook through. Um, we're going to tap it again and see if we need to turn back on the uh, burner. All right, so if you've uncovered your chicken, is that, um, do you recommend everyone else do the same? Um, 
only if you're going to check on it. Um, if your if you, if your stock if, if your stock is really high and chicken's getting close, you can leave the you can leave the cover off actually, and let it finish cooking. Um, but like let's say if you're in a place where it's really cold, like like today is a chilly day, and yeah. if your kitchen is really cold, yeah. you know you can cool down you can cool down the stock really fast too off the lid on. So there's a lot of little like micro factors that can affect the final doneness. All right, so I'm gonna temp it again. Touching the breastbone. Okay, so we're in we're in like around 110. So it's take, so that, this is actually cooking a little slower than I would like. So we're gonna turn back on the burner on the medium heat. All right, medium heat. And then we're just gonna leave it. So my general rule of thumb is the temperature will void there on the medium heat. Temperature of the chicken should go up one degree, about one degree every minute, right? A little, little faster than that sometimes. So huh. at this point, we're about three to four degrees off the mark. So if we were to like leave it off, it would take a lot of fish. So that's why we're going to turn it back on and try to speed up the process. But hopefully, we'll stop it before it gets to the point where it like overcooks. So you're putting it on what level of heat? Uh, just medium, like five out of ten. All right. So we've got some questions about where you're buying some of your supplies. Do we have a few minutes to address that now? Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. So everyone's dying to know where we can buy hooks like yours on Amazon. Ah. Or like if Amazon is possible, or do we have to go to a specialty grocery store? Um, we we get these from a restaurant supply store called uh, Action Sales in Monterey Park. Mm. Um, I'm not sure if the regular supermarkets will sell it, but you know, that's a good place to go. It's open to the public. Um, okay, and everyone's wondering where they can buy the rose wine. Does 99 Ranch have it? Uh, 99 Ranch will definitely have it. Almost any Asian supermarket will usually have it. Um, okay. It's not labeled as rose wine, but you know, this one's called um, May Kwai Lu. Can you bring it closer so people can see the label? Okay. Yeah, and you know, you see an image of a little rose there. Okay, it's so, a telltale sign. Yeah, it, it's usually going to be on the more pricey side too, so you'll know, you'll, you'll, you'll kind of be able to spot it out. And it's always, always, always a clear, like, liquor. Yeah, everyone's saying it's so hard to find. After you open the rose wine, do you need to refrigerate it? Typically, we don't, but then again, we use it fast enough where it's not an issue. So, but then again, my, my parents, they, they don't, they, they never refrigerate any of that stuff that they've been using for years. So I think it should be fine. Well, someone said they checked four stores and couldn't find it. So it just like, it depends where you are and what sort oh. of metropolitan uh, access you have. Someone says action sales might have it. And then therefore the rest of it gets overcooked in the process. Okay. Um, and someone says, why um, or how long can they store the ginger sauce for? Can they do they fridge it, uh, refrigerate it, or no? Yeah, if you you should refrigerate it, and ideally, I tell people it's good for two weeks from the day you make it. Mm, okay. Um, any longer than that, it starts to lose its aroma, and it can start to go off depending on like how much of the water content is of the ginger. Okay. All right, so. This drop is starting to get hot again, so we're looking at like 175. So we're gonna turn it off, and then we're gonna temp the chicken again. All right. Okay. So at this point, we're looking at okay, it's in the mid 120s. So it's it's, take, it's definitely taking a while. <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm actually gonna turn the burner back on because this bird is taking a little longer than I expected. Okay. Usually, if, if you're doing a if you're doing a smaller bird, usually it means that you have like a higher ratio of like meat to liquid, and then it's not going to be an issue. Whereas like a music kind of a big like brim music is almost like filling the pot to the brim, so right. Um, any it's going to cause the uh, water, I mean the, the the cooking liquid to cool down faster whenever you're not it's not the flame or the power source. All right. Well, you know, we, we'll stick around until we can see the, the dish finished. I, I like shopping at the Japanese markets because they tend to carry like high quality chidori chickens. Mm -hmm. And usually it's, you know, you can just, usually when you go, you can tell they look, they look really nice and there's no discoloration and the skin looks perfect. So someone's saying, right, well, turn off. okay. 
Right, so it's off it. on the boiling water now. Yeah, so it came back to a boil, so I just want to turn it off and let it sit now. Right. And then also sometimes air gets checked when you're checking the temperature and you bring it up, air gets in the cavity again. So you want to like kind of like dip it up and you see bubbles coming up, that means there's air was inside. So you just want to make sure like all that air goes out. Or else it won't cook evenly. Oh, okay. Okay. And would you say rose wine and champagne? Shaoxing wine are interchangeable. How do you pronounce? Oh uh, yeah, Shaoxing. Uh yeah. yes. The, um, in the case of this recipe, I say they would. They are, even though the aroma is like completely different. Um, but Shaoxing is a very kind of like general purpose cooking alcohol in, in Chinese cooking. So I figured like for people that couldn't find rose wine, you know, um, Shaoxing is probably the next best thing. Yeah. Although you know, sake is actually probably a pretty good alternative as well. Oh my god, it smells so good in here. Everyone's houses must smell so amazing. Okay, so we're hitting about 130-ish. Um, so we're almost there. So once it hits 145, we'll pull the chicken and then we'll let it kind of rest a little bit before we carve it up. Um, I want, it's still gonna keep cooking if you take it out too. So at 145, it's probably gonna, after it rests for a few minutes, it's probably gonna start hitting close to 150. Yeah, so I wanna ask something about um, is there a difference in cooking times when you use the tougher free range chickens? Um, the, the tougher free range ones, because they probably have a lot less meat they probably cook a lot faster. Mm. Um, so, just I would say they could be done in like as fast as 25 minutes. Someone says that their husband says dinner smells good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope they like it. <laughs> Someone says they want another class where you reveal your secrets of white chicken, white cut chicken. Well, if we had time, I would, I would, I would glad, gladly do that. But um, yeah, I don't but have any. I don't have. Also, I don't really like to say I have any secrets. Oh, that's so, nice. I, just, I I usually share everything. Every I usually share everything I know. I mean, because everything everything I do, nothing is nothing's complicated. It's just practice. Yeah. You know, like. I did, but you know, so because I'm not, you know, I'm not concerned with like giving away the secrets that like someone will be able to like copy and do what we do. Because honestly, like I probably at this point cooked maybe more than ten thousand chickens wow. in the last couple of years. So if you want, I mean, if you want, to, if you want to know everything, I'll probably show you. But you know, you're gonna have a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> so. Yeah, we're ten thousand chickens behind you, no matter what we do. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Even, even one of the even our, even my most experienced guy in my kitchen, he's he are he probably has a couple thousand under his belt too. Wow! So when you have to do we had to do it for a living, it, you learn really fast. Right. Okay. So at this point, I want to say it's going to take about another five to ten minutes to finish cooking. Um, so that so when that's done, we'll, we'll take it out. Um, if you have vegetables. After that, you can use the liquid to cook the vegetables. All right. So we'll just tell us about your one-year anniversary. I mean, Chef and I were talking earlier, and you said that you guys were open for three weeks before everything shut down for COVID. Yeah. So we so January twenty-six was actually our first day where we actually opened to the public, um, which sadly coincided with the same day Kobe died, mm -hmm. and so that was quite a day. Wow. And then. You know, but then we were we were just already in it, and you know we had like no time to stop and think. So, and then we were just getting ready for the Chinese New Year celebration, uh, which was in about like another two weeks. And that's and then the thing, and then we were hoping it's probably busy, and then it ended up not being so busy because yeah. around that time things weren't locked down yet, but people were starting to get like yellow worried. Yeah, and that's when like all the um, the government was like. I first was saying like, don't gather in crowds of 500 and then you're like 100 and then you're like 50 or 20. And then then people were like, don't gather in crowds at all. Yeah. And a lot of the parents took their kids out of the, the parade or they didn't come to the celebration because you know they knew it was going to be a crowded place. Yeah. So that's when we knew that this was starting to get like kind of serious. And then the week after that, like it was, that's when the first shelter in place order came down and LA became like a ghost town overnight. Yeah, but you guys have survived it all. And we were talking about <laughs> how it was actually kind of a blessing in disguise that you didn't have too much time to like, you know, get too big before everything kind of required you to reduce down. Yeah, I mean, you know, like 
if I had, you know, like I, I was lucky that I didn't take on any kind of like business loans or any kind of larger financial burdens, you know, that any normal person would have done to start a business. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've been very much so like, uh, uh, like a very like bootstrap operation from the beginning. Like yeah. we just kind of try to like, well, what do, try to like figure out what do we need to survive this month? And it was just kind of like make it work what we have and see how each month goes. Yeah. And you guys, I mean, I'm so happy that you guys are still here celebrating your one year. You guys made it through when so many other restaurants haven't. Um, and you guys, they're on talk and, you know, they're always advertising on Instagram. I'm sure that's how you all found out about this. <laughs> um, so we can keep up with you. And someone's asking about the color of the chicken. And they, they say, when you bring home a chicken from a deli in Chinatown, it's one color uniform throughout. How do they achieve that? And how could we potentially achieve that? Um, so that's more of dependent on the type of chicken you're using. Mm. So, I mean, if you can see ours, it's a little discolored on the back side as it it's spotty. That's more, I think that's some more result just using the American chicken. Mm. Uh, Asian chickens, um, they do tend to have like a better quality of skin. So you'll see like a more uniform color when you cook. Mm. Okay, I think that's the liver here. I'm gonna take this out because that's part that's definitely cooked. All right. Okay, I think this is pretty good. Yeah. Okay, so we'll pull this out. All right, it's time to remove the chicken. Okay, so um if you don't have a hook like I do, so we're gonna pretend like you don't because most people probably don't. Uh, let's see. The best way to do this would be let's see, I'll use uh, so, what I'll do is, I'll grab my neck with some tongs, get like maybe two pairs of chopsticks, stick them under the, uh, arm, the armpits. The wing, yeah, the wing like that. And then I'll grab, grab that one. Oh, it's okay. Oops. I don't know, let's get it under. That's fine. Okay, so, and then we're going to lift it up like this. All right. Oops. Yeah, because the joints around the wing are still very strong. You know, if you try to, I mean, the worst, it's not, it's, it's, it's not going to the world. If you need to, you can grab it through the uh, chicken butt and the back like this, and that's fine too. But just make sure that you give it a bit of a trip. Okay. And then, you know, just don't grab it too hard with the tongue because you're ruining the skin. But if you don't really care about breaking the skin, that's fine too. And um, should the veggies get put in the broth now, or? Yeah, sure, you can definitely do that. I'm gonna flip the chicken over so that way on the back. I don't want the breast to flatten. Okay, so, I'll let this come back to a boil. Once it does, I'll throw in the veggies. Okay. And then uh, we'll, we'll just blanch them really quick and take them back out. All right. So Normally I would just there. do it in like a pot of hot water, but, um, just because it's just easier right now, we'll just use this. Yeah, so no tenting with foil. Uh, no, you just want it to cool down naturally to the point where um, it's cool enough for you to handle. Um, usually for like uh, white chicken, we'll, or like high chicken, we'll, we'll duck it in ice water to like firm up, firm up the skin. But because we don't want to wash away the flavor, we're not gonna do that with this type of chicken. All right, guys, so we're obviously going over the hour, but we're going to just, you know, hang in here for another 10 minutes until Chef's got this cut up and plated. I know he's got some tips about how to cut up a chicken that I'm sure those of you, about 350 of you who are hanging in there with us would love to see. And then as soon as we've got it on a plate, we'll let you guys go enjoy your dinner. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do, we'll just do this right now because I'm pretty sure some of you can't wait. Um, <laughs> it's probably going to be kind of hot, but... So my hands are used to it. So if you're doing a whole chicken, usually yep. what we, we do is, well, I'll flip it over like this, and I'll remove the wings, I'll remove the mid joint wings first. And you just kind of want to cut in between that skin flap here, cut to the, to the joint, but not through it. And then you can snap the joint and just kind of snap it off. And then for the drumstick, you just kind of cut underneath the, the armpit area and cut a circle around it like that. Oh. And then 
to fall to the front. And then what you do is that you can kind of pop the joint. And once you pop the joint, then you cut in between. So we don't, I don't like to cut through bone. I like to cut around bone. That way it's easier on your knife. And it's just, it takes on a more natural shape. So I'm just kind of forcing the joint to expose itself like that. And then I, then wherever the joint is, I just cut in between. You know, it's less effort that way. Okay, then we'll cut the drumstick. So the, for the drumsticks, you'll notice that there's like the skin area here. There's an air pocket inside. That's where the breast of the darkness separates. So you're gonna cut through it, cut a little hole for that and expose it. And now, now you see that air pocket. And so now you can kind of use that air pocket. Now you can look in and cut the leg off and just kind of go around. And you're gonna flip the leg over like this and expose the, the joint. And then once again, cut, cut it between the joint. Nice. So we'll do it again on this side. Cut. Wow. It's kind of follow through, you know, pop the joint and cut, cut in between the joint. You just cut over like that. And then you can keep the leg corner like this or you can go, or you can separate it. So I'll cut a slit in the middle like this and then pop the joint again, go between the joint, cut like that. Then same thing for this side. Joints exposed, go through it. You're gonna notice that there's a little vein here that looks a little bloody, don't worry about it. It's just a leftover like blood vessel that no matter how, what, how, how much you cook it, it's gonna stay red and it's gonna be there. So you're fine, it's not blood. Okay. Okay, we're gonna cook to the veggies in here. And then slow around a little bit. And then I, so veggies just went in the stock if that's yeah. something you choose to do. And then I just turn it off right now because this is a, I'm using yu choy, which is a very quick cooking leaf. If you, if you do something like broccoli, um, you're probably gonna need a leaf to heat on. But for this, I'm just gonna turn the heat off and let it sit in there for a little bit. Okay, right. so back to the chicken. Okay, this is part, this part of the back, I call it the saddle. So at this point, the back is very, um, Bendable, so you should be able to just snap it back like this and then just kind of break it off. And that piece is good to nod. To nod on? Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll do the breast. So, what we're going to do is that you'll notice that there's a natural indentation. So, you don't want to cut directly in the middle to get some of the bonus. What you want to do is go a little bit to the side and pop it in. You'll kind of feel it with the bone, and you'll just follow the bone. And then you just kind of make a line that follows that bone. And once you cut through, you can kind of start pulling it apart. And when you pull it apart, it just naturally comes apart. You'll see that right there. Yeah. And you just keep following through, kind of like wow. cutting a little bit at a time. Like what you can do is that you can just lift it and cut it like this and let, let gravity oh, wow. do the rest of the work. Okay. Wow. And then usually the breast is two parts. This is tender. You can just kind of pull it out like this. I treat it as a separate muscle because it has a different oh, texture. God. And then the, the breast and the tender. So you can keep it whole. I like to cut it half into bite sized pieces. And the breast, you just slice as you would normally. Wow. And then, and then same thing for air breast. You're just going off the center. You know, you're going to leave a little bit, a little bit of meat in the center. You can always scrape it off later if you want to, like, you know, keep your dog or just use every piece. <laughs> and once again, just kind of let gravity do the work, kind of follow, cut to the bone, let it not come off, and it'll just kind of naturally peel off on its own. And then all you're doing is with the knife is just helping it along the way. Wow. And then sometimes there's no bead in here too, you can like kind of scrape it out, you know. And once again, off tender, and here's the breast, another tender, and then Okay, well, it's probably too small, but you get, you get, <laughs> you get, you get, you get the idea. Wow, that looks awesome. Oh, Someone's wondering how you would plate it. Wow, let me grab it there real quick. Okay, so, right, so we already have some rice ready. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna, gonna skip the rice. I'm 
gonna make a small little bed. Do a little bit of space on the side right here. And then I'll just put a little bit of everything. Also for the wing tip, if you want, you can cut it off, just cut off your joint and then just kind of hold it down and pull it, pull it through. And then you'll, once the joint's exposed, you know, cut it between the joint again. And some people like to eat, eat this, some people don't, up to you. So we'll just put a little bit of each piece of chicken on. Trump stick, the back's gonna be kind of big, so I'll just follow the bone and cut it into two pieces. So you have one piece that has the bone and one piece that doesn't. Put a little bit of the white meat on. Wow, that's a big plate of chicken. How you do here? Mm. <laughs> Just put a little bit, a piece of the tender too, so you can try a little bit of each part of chicken. Okay, and then we're going to grab our veggies and then sauce it. All right. Okay. A this. Yum. Okay. Then let's see, we're to your scallion sauce. The moment we've all been waiting for. You can eat you can either choose to put it on top or you can just put in a little sauce cup to the side or just put it on the side of the plate. But you know, for this purpose, since we're gonna put it out anyway, we'll just put it out <laughs> right on top. Yes. And then I also like to pour a little bit of the soy sauce liquid that was cooking it back on it as well. Yeah. So you, I would, ideally you want to strain the spices out of it, um, but just try not to get too many of the spices in. But this, this sauce goes really well with the white rice. Mm. Everyone says it looks amazing. They've learned so much. Yeah, and that's it. Pretty simple, right? Yes. Thank you, Chef. Wow, that looks amazing. Everyone, I hope that you guys have equally amazing looking plates wherever you are. If you want to post anything on Instagram, please tag us. Um, we're at Fowler Museum. And what's your handle, Chef? Um, our restaurant Sando is uh, PRDLA. PRDLA. Oh, underscore. underscore LA. Underscore LA, yes. All right. Show us what's up, guys. Show us your plates. This looks <laughs> amazing. Chef, happy one year anniversary. Thank you. Thank you very much for this amazing lesson and sharing your secrets with us. Everyone, thank you so much for joining us and hanging in there for those extra 15 minutes. I know it was worth it. And we'll see you guys next time. Hope you'll join us. You can find information on our closing slide. Thanks, Chef. All right. Thank you. Bye.